Hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna Veni and we've been talking about the story of life on earth and that's biology. So welcome to my lecture today. So to, we are in lecture two of human health and disease. So we have been talking about the common diseases. So we have been reading so far. So now we are going to talk about how our body is going to forget against these diseases. So basically, we are going to talk about immunity today. So we'll also talk about AIDS, cancer and drugs. So these are some of the things that we're going to discuss today. So we'll try and finish off this chapter so that you will be able to revise. Yes, Anthony Abhi, a very, very happy good evening. Yes, I'm doing good. How are you? So thank you so much for joining my session well before time. So please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for all those who are new to my session. So Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I teach a class 12 chapter. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I teach a class 11 chapter. So once again, please um, do like, share and subscribe and thank you so much for joining my session. So today, let's move forward and talk about human health and disease. So tomorrow's schedule, so tomorrow at 5 p.m. we are talking about respiration in plants. I will try to finish respiration in one shot because basically we have to talk about glycolysis and the parts of aerobic and fermentation reactions. So I will try to finish off in one lecture. So that on um, maximum on Friday, we can continue. So today is Wednesday. So Friday, we'll continue with strategies for enhanced food production. And Saturday, we will revise the other chapters of plant physiology. We are still left with three more chapters of plant physiology. But in the entire 11th, we have only three chapters, right? But we still have suitable time. So no hurry. So we are still on a safe zone. So in class 12, I still have only four more chapters to revise before your exam. That is strategies, microbes, biotech 1, biotech 2. So rest all, I have revised one round in your syllabus wrap up series. So after I finish all the portions, I will try to finish the entire portion maximum by the 3rd of September, after which we'll have two full syllabus mentee. So we will discuss a lot of questions. So if we have sufficient time, so one day I will bring 30 questions. It is a mixture of the entire body botany and zoo or I can say I will bring 30 questions from only botany, 30 questions from zoology. So randomly from all the chapters we will discuss them and then we will have one complete full syllabus mentee so that you are done revising the entire biology. Okay, so please go through all my PPTs. So in syllabus wrap up, I am doing only revision. But before this, I have discussed n number of questions. We have solved a lot of questions in our lecture and all the PPTs are still available in your eCareer point app. So please download them. Please go through the questions. So the more questions you go through, the more helpful it is. So for transport and plans and all, I have kept two special sessions where I discussed only the concept. So please go through those. So those are also very, very important so that you will have a recap. So now we are running short of time. I don't want to miss, uh, waste much of your time in revising everything. So Isri, I'm telling you, go back and solve as many questions. So before uh, in a time period, after every chapter, I did stand and discuss questions. So please go through them as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. So without any further delay, let's move forward to your human health and disease. So what is the topic that we were discussing? So we defined what is health, we defined what is disease. So we also spoke about the common disease, the bacterial disease, the viral disease, the protozoal disease, the helminthus disease and finally your uh, a ringworm that is caused by fungi, right? Then we started defining immunity. We spoke about the two types of immunity, innate and adaptive immunity, right? So today we'll talk about active and passive immunity, high focus, so simply focus. Hello and welcome to the lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. So uh, today we'll also talk about what is allergy, what is vaccination, what is immunization. Then we'll also talk about what is autoimmunity, cancer, AIDS and finally what about drugs. So drugs I will teach you in a simple way how to remember the example. So moving forward we were talking about the common disease right. So yeah we define what is health, what is disease. I hope all those portions are clear. So here giving you a flowchart of only the common disease then I will move forward with immunity. So we were talking about the common diseases in humans. So first we talk about bacterial disease. So we spoke in detail about your typhoid, pneumonia, so then we have tetanus, 
you had tuberculosis. So we have diphtheria. So we have oofing cough. So all these are your bacterial diseases, right? Um, hi, Shamita. Yes, hello. Welcome to my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. So thank you so much. I hope your preparation is going on good. Hi, Darini. Yes, a very, very happy good evening and welcome. So thank you both of you for coming to my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Yes, good evening. Ma'am, in these days, revising lesson in physics and chemistry or doing questions is good because in what I, I give more time, uh, that's fine. You can revise the lessons and solve some questions. So that is completely fine. That is okay. That's not an issue. So you can revise a chapter. Then you can start um, solving questions. That's completely fine. So if you're doing electrostatics, solve at least 100 questions, but in increase your time. So don't be very slow. So to revise electrostatics and to solve questions, don't take three hours. So that is too much. Right. So did I answer your question or will you type the question again for me? So the words are not clear. So change your clarity. So change the quality of the video because I also have a screen here where I can see what I'm doing. So yes, there it looks clear. So can you refresh your screen? Simply focus. Yes. Okay. So these are the bacterial disease. So typhoid is caused by your salmonella typhi. And the test that is used to confirm your salmonella is your viral test and pneumonia. So pneumonia is caused by your streptococcus pneumoniae or your haemophilus influenza. So these two things. So tetanus is caused by Clostridium tetany. So tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So I just write mycobacterium. So diphtheria is caused by cottony bacterium and oofing cough is caused by pertussis. So this is also known as the 100 day cough. 100 days cough. So it persists for 100 days. So then we went on to talk about your viral disease. So the first viral disease is your COVID-19. So it is a viral infection that is caused by coronavirus. So you have your uh, AIDS. AIDS is caused by your HIV. So then moving forward, we have your hepatitis B. So this is caused by herpes simplex virus. And then you have your common cold. This is caused by a group of viruses known as rhinovirus. And one more thing, your dengue is also caused by arbovirus, but the carrier is a mosquito. So dengue is also due to a viral infection. Fine. So after this, you have your protozoan. So protozoan disease include your malaria and your uh, amoebiosis. So this is caused by Entamoeba histolytica and your malaria is caused by Plasmodium species, right? Okay, so after that we have your Helminthus disease, the ones that are caused by your worms. So the first one is Ascariasis. The next one is your Elephantiasis or your Filariasis. Yes, so all of these are Helminthus diseases. Adenovirus 9, so this is caused by Arbovirus. Okay, Antonia B, fine. And last one, the infection that is caused by fungi. So this is your ringworm. So we also spoke about the life cycle of the plasmodium in detail. That is for your malaria, if you remember. So once again, the life cycle of plasmodium and then we move forward with immunity. Okay, so here we are talking about the life cycle of a plasmodium. So plasmodium causes your malaria. So we have two species of the plasmodium. The first one is plasmodium vivax and the other one is plasmodium falciparum. So this is malignant and this is benign. Right? Okay, so now how it all starts, this has an infectious stage in its life cycle. The infectious stage of this plasmodium is your sporozoid. So this sporozoid is present in the mosquito, the female anaphylos mosquito. 
So when this bites a human being, this sporozoite enters the liver of the human being. So where the sporozoites multiply. So they multiply comfortably. So here the sporozoites multiply. So once they are done multiplying and increasing their number, they move into the blood stream or the blood circulation. So the abundant cells in your blood is your RBC. So inside the RBC, they enter a gametophytic stage. So once they are ready to form the male and female gamete, your RBC can no longer tolerate them and then your RBC ruptures. So once your RBC ruptures, so then what happens? It releases a toxin known as hemozoin. So this hemozoin causes your malarial fever. Okay. So now your uh, um, gametophyte stage is still present. Now once again if the mosquito, if the female anaphylos mosquito bites the human being. So the gametophyte stage enters the mosquito. So fertilization happens here. So fertilization of the male and female gametophyte of the plasmodium happens here. So this is basically in the midgut of the mosquito. So then they develop into the sporozoid stage again and they get stored in the salivary glands of the mosquito. So this is ready for the next cycle of infection. So this is the life cycle of your plasmodium. Fine? Clear? So now moving forward and talking about your immunity. So last class we stopped here. So the uh, with whatever ability that your body can fight back this pathogenous infection is your immunity, right? So immunity is comfort. So you we have two types of immunity we read. The first type of immunity is innate immunity. So innate immunity is non-specific. Okay, so your adaptive immunity is specific and it also has a memory. So here we spoke about four physiological, yeah, this is inborn. So this is there at the time of birth itself. So this is innate, okay. So here we have four physiological barriers which are part of the innate immunity. So what are the four barriers? First one is the physical barrier. So physical barrier includes the skin and the mucus coating, right? The second one is your physiological barrier. So physiological is the pH of the stomach, the pH of blood, the pH of the saliva, the pH of the tears, etc. The third one is your cellular barrier. So you have your phagocytotic, uh, phagocytic cell like your monocytes, right, your neutrophils. And number four, it is your cytokine barrier, which are chemical substances like your interferons. Oh yes, so your adaptive immunity is done by your lymphocytes. We have two types of lymphocytes. One is B lymphocyte and one is T lymphocyte. So B lymphocyte produces your antibody through a plasma cell. So B lymphocyte produces plasma cell which in turn produces antibody and your B lymphocyte also produces a memory cell which stores the memory as to which antigen it is fighting. Okay, so T lymphocyte, there are three types of T lymphocyte. So we have TH, that is T helper cells. Then we have TC cells, that is cytotoxic T cells. And the third one is T regulatory cells. So TH cells in turn stimulate your B lymphocytes to produce more amount of antibodies. So cytotoxic T cells attack cells phagocytotically. And T regulatory cells, it brings down the concentration of T lymphocytes after an infection. So this brings the homeostasis. So you can say this. So each of them have a receptor. So this has a receptor that is known as CD4. So CD stands for cluster of differentiation. So this is CD8. So this is where exactly we stop. So now moving forward, we are about to talk about the structure of an antibody. Also remember you have two types of immune response. One is your primary response, the other one is your secondary response. So always primary response is gradual and it is slow. So this is quick and it is of a high intensity. So your secondary response is based on the memory cell, right? Is this clear? 
Yes, hi Swami, a very very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Fine? Okay. So this is the structure of your antibody. So your antibody has two chains. It has one heavy chain and it has one light chain. Sorry, it has two light chains and it has two heavy chains. If you can see, all the green color ones are the heavy chain. The heavy chains are joined together by a disulfide bond and this portion of your heavy chain is known as your hinge. And the blue color ones are your light chain, right? So thus we represent your antibody as H2L2. So two heavy chains and two light chains. So this is how we represent, okay? So this is your hinge. So two heavy chains are joined together by your disulfide bonds, fine? So in all the antigens, so we have five types of antigens. Your antigens, sorry, your antibodies are also known as your immunoglobulins. So IGS stands for immunoglobulins, right? Yes, ma'am. A very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. So we have five types of immunoglobulins. We have IgG. So we have IgA. So we have IgM. So we have IgE. And we have IgD. So we have five types of antibodies in our body. So G stands for gamma, alpha, mu, epsilon and delta. So these are the five types. Okay. So this is intraplacental. So this can move within the placenta from the baby into the placenta. So this is present in the breast milk of the mother. So this is the antibody that is present in your colostrum. Right. So IgM is the largest antibody. So it is a pentameric structure. So this this is used at the time of allergy. So in all the five types of immunoglobulin or antibody, so what happens is this portion remains constant. So that is why this is known as a constant region. So what changes in each of the antibody is this region which is known as the variable region. So why this region alone changes, there is another reason for this. So this is where the antigen binds. So this is the antigen binding portion of your antibody. So depending upon each of the antigen, so this variable portion changes. Fine. So this is about your antigen. Sorry, this is about your antibody. So yeah. Now what is cell mediated immunity? What is humoral mediated immunity? So your B lymphocytes. So I told you your B lymphocytes secrete your antibodies. Right. So they secrete antibodies or immunoglobulins. Where do they secrete this? They secrete your antibodies or immunoglobulins into the blood circulation. They move through the blood circulation. So early Greek people called blood has humor. Right? So that is why a B lymphocyte is capable of initiating humoral mediated immune response. So HMI stands for humoral mediated immune response. So this is done by a B lymphocyte. Okay. So whereas your T lymphocyte. So T lymphocyte does not have the function of producing antibody though we have the T helper cell. So it is mostly cytotoxic right. So it can either attack a other cell or it can either stimulate a B cell. So its function is based on your cell. So this triggers a cell mediated immunity and this triggers a humoral mediated immunity. Fine, you got it? Yes, Ajit, a very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Hello, sir, a very, very happy good evening. So welcome to my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. So till this it's clear, what is HMI and what is... Um, CMI. So now I move further. So we are going to talk about what is active and passive immunity. So active immunity, when a host is exposed to antigen. Yes, I am doing good. How are you doing Ajit? So when a host is exposed to antigen, which may or may be in the form of living or dead microbes or a small portion of the protein. So antibodies are produced in the human vein. Suppose if you have common cold, so your body has the pathogen and your body is producing the antibody. So that is active immunity. Hi Pooja, yes a very very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So I got back to you in telegram. So you sent me the syllabus of your KBPY. 
right? So it is a mix of class 11 and class 12. So you have to concentrate on both. So all the lectures are available. So if you do not uh, understand anything, so please feel free to contact me. I'm ready to clear your doubts. Okay? Yes. So thank you for joining my session once again. So, when your body produces antibodies, so that is active immunity. But this is a slow process because it takes time for your body to produce B lymphocytes, multiply and then produce antibody. So, when ready-made antibodies are directly given to protect the body against severe cases, that is passive immunity. So, now let's talk about active and passive immunity. So, what did I say? So, active immunity is when the body produces, when the host body, so we are the host, right? So a microorganism infects our body, so we are the host. When the host body produces antibodies, it is active immunity. So what happens in the case of vaccines? So what is vaccinization or what is immunization? So in vaccinization or immunization, I give a portion of the inactivated antigen. Suppose if polio is caused by polio virus, I heat inactivate the polio vaccine and give it inside the body. Since it is heat inactivated, it is avirulent. It is not very infective, right? But still my body produces antibody against this. But along with this, a memory cell is also produced. Right? So, next time the real antigen comes inside my body, I have a heightened response because this is secondary immune response. Okay? Clear? So, your vaccination and immunization is an example of active immunity. So, in vaccination or immunization, your body is made to produce the antibodies. Done? So, this is active immunity. So, remember always your active immunity is slow because your body cannot produce antibodies instantly. First, you do not have more amount of B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. So, they are basically your WBCs, right? So, your RBCs are millions in number. Your WBCs put together is around 6,000 to 8,000. So, if the body needs more amount of your uh, lymphocytes, it will first replicate, it will first divide and then only it can produce antibodies. So, that is why this response is pretty slow but it is very durable once produced it will kill all the antigen now what is passive immunity so when ready-made antibodies is given inside the host so this is passive immunity so the host does not produce any antibody right so this is ready-made antibody so this is passive immunity so let me give you one example if a bus person is bit by a snake right so we should be very careful that the venom does not reach the brain of the person so otherwise the person will die so in that case i cannot wait for so long so i directly inject ready-made antibodies into the host so this is my passive immune response so through the colostrum, that is the breast milk of the mother, so IgA moves into the fetus, moves into the infant, right? So this is also a type of passive immunity. So passive immunity is fast, but it has no memory. So this is the difference between active and passive immunity. Fine? Yes? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there are the, they are the types of immunity, active and passive immunity, okay? So, innate immunity and adaptive immunity are the one that is present, how your body is fighting. So, active and passive immunity is based on the production of antibodies, okay? Yes, they are also the types of immunity. So, moving further, so vaccination or immunization, this is based on the property of memory, right? So, I can either give you a small portion of the inactivated antigen or the entire uh, antigen or the DNA portion of it, a subunit portion of it. So, I can give you any portion of it so that your body has a memory, right? Fine. So, these days we have recom... Okay, so the next is allergy, fine. So, what I was trying to say here is that if I am saying uh, the vaccines in vaccination, I am giving you antigen, right? 
so now all of us are corona vaccinated right we are all covid 19 vaccinated sorry at least uh, so above who are 18 so almost 60 percent of the population all of them are vaccinated right so what happens in that so the antigen in the inactive form is given inside my body so my body is producing antibodies and it stores the memory so if really a coronavirus enters inside my body will give a heightened immune response okay Yes, that is discussed. We have four barriers in innate immunity. So, that is discussed, Ajit. Okay. Yeah. So, this antigen which I am giving inside the body, it can be the whole antigen which is inactivated. It can be one small subunit of the antigen which can be inactivated or it can be only the DNA of this virus or the antigen if it's a bacteria the dna can be given because for tetanus also we have vaccine it can be the dna even if the virus has rna we traverse transcribe it and we do dna vaccine so recently we have your rna vaccine so we call it as mrna vaccine so whatever it is dna has to be transcribed to produce proteins so directly you give mrna vaccine your covaxin is your mrna vaccine so these are the different types of vaccine we have heat inactivated the whole vaccine so we have subunit vaccine we have dna vaccine and recently we have your mrna vaccines fine okay so the next one is allergy so allergy is when your body has a certain heightened or exaggerated response against a dust particle or anything is an allergy so allergy is caused by allergen so during this allergy so you have the antigen or the immunoglobin ige produced so common examples of allergens include your mites in the dust mites are small worm like substances then pollens pollen grains because pollination happens then we have animal dander so animal dander is the hair of the animal the cat dog etc so when you have an allergy your mast cells secrete histamine and serotonin so what are mast cells so mast cells are type of immune cells that are present beneath the skin so they secrete your histamine or serotonin at the time of allergy Fine. So, the next one is autoimmunity. So, autoimmunity is when your body is not able to differentiate between self and non-self and it starts attacking your self cells that is your autoimmunity. So, due to genetic or other unknown reason, the body attacks the self cells. So, that is autoimmune disorder. So, example is your rheumatic arthritis. So, in your rheumatic arthritis, your joints get weakened because your immune system starts attacking the joints. So, this is rheumatic arthritis you have a number of autoimmune diseases one will also be your myasthenia gravis so in your myasthenia gravis your neuromuscular junction is uh, disturbed right so the junction where your muscles and the neuron interact then you have your multiple sclerosis so all these are some of the examples of autoimmune disorders fine so now moving forward, so we are going to talk about the immune system. So just like you have a digestive system which helps in the process of the entire process of digestion. Yes, we do have a very strong immune system which fights against the antigen. So immune systems are lymphoid organs, tissues, cells and soluble molecules like antibodies. So all these come under your immune system. So this, these are unique, they recognize foreign antigen, they respond to these and they also remember this that is they have a memory. They also play a role in allergy, autoimmune reaction and organ transplant. So if a small patch of tissue from my body is transplanted into Antony Abbey's body, so the Antony, Antony's body will first reject my tissue because according to his immune system, my tissue is foreign, right? So the T lymphocytes will be the first one to do graft rejection. So if I am going to donate a portion of my tissue to Antony, so we have to give Antony Abbey immune suppressants. Only then his body will accept my uh, um, transfer of tissue that is my graft right so that is there 
So, who are the members of your lymphoidal organs? So, we have two types of lymphoidal organs. We have primary and secondary lymphoidal organs. So, primary lymphoidal organs include your bone marrow. So, your bone marrow is for your B lymphocytes and your thymus is for your T lymphocytes. So, these are the primary sites where your B and your T lymphocytes, they are born, they mature, they proliferate. Everything is done here. But here they do not encounter an antigen, okay? But in the secondary lymphoidal organs, they encounter an antigen. So unless and until a B and a T lymphocyte does not encounter an antigen, so we call them as naive cells. So naive is innocent. They don't know exactly the outside world, right? So secondary lymphoidal organs like your spleen, your lymph nodes, your tonsils, your payers, patches of the small intestine, and appendix to some extent, they are the sites of interaction of lymphocyte with the antigen, right? So this is your secondary lymphoidal organs. So I wanted to remember the primary lymphoidal organs as well as the secondary lymphoidal organs, right? So once the antigen uh, antibody, sorry, once the T lymphocyte finds an antigen, so they will start creating an effect that is they produce antibodies, okay? So apart from this, you also have one more region that is known as MALT or galt. You have both of them. So this is mucus associated lymphoidal tissue. The mucus region where it has a lot of immune system, immune cells that is mud. So your galt is gastrointestinal associated lymphoidal tissue. So there also you have a lot of immune cells which roam around to find any foreign particles, right? Yes, simply focus. What happened? Once again, you're coming and saying hello. So you lost connection in between. So now we are talking about uh, AIDS. So we know, so we are going to talk about AIDS and your cancer. So AIDS is your acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So AIDS is caused by, yes, 50% of your body is made up of my, that is mucosal associated lymphoidal tissue. So it is understood, right? It is your innate immune, uh, it is an innate barrier. Your mucus lining is your innate barrier. So that is the first innate barrier, that is your physical innate barrier. So it is understood. Yeah, so AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It is caused by HIV, human deficiency virus, a member of retrovirus. So when I say it's a member of retrovirus, so the genetic material is RNA. So they do reverse transcriptase to produce a complementary DNA. Because the host is having a genetic material of DNA. So our body has DNA, right? So it can only integrate DNA inside a body, not RNA. So those are known as retrovirus. Hi, Vinay. Hello. How are you? So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Fine. So retroviruses enclosing RNA genome. So they are known as your retrovirus. So they are, how is a HIV virus transmitted? A person who is tested positive for HIV is not that he has AIDS. So AIDS is a condition when the HIV infection continues for more than 7 to 9 years. So that condition is known as AIDS. So HIV is transmitted through your sexual contact with infected person. Transmission of contaminated blood and blood products. So sharing infected needles intravenous drug abusers so infected mother to child through the placenta so all these are the ways that it is trans uh, it is transmitted suppose you go to a hospital and you get injected right so the nurse injects you and when she takes it out by mistake she pokes it into someone so there are high chances that a lot of infection can get transmitted. So you have to be very, very careful, right? So all these diseases can be nearly avoided because we have no cure. So till today, we do not have a vaccine. We do not have a complete therapy which can cure AIDS, right? So we have to stay cautious. So where exactly or how exactly it replicates? So replication of the retrovirus, so how exactly it happens? So first thing, when your HIV enters inside your body, so first thing, it has a single-stranded RNA. So when it enters inside your body, so this will undergo reverse transcriptase and it will produce a complementary DNA. So this complementary DNA will get integrated into the host genome. So this will get integrated into the host genome. So as a result, this will undergo replication. So this will undergo transcription. So this will undergo translation as well. So thus your viral particles are produced. So your completely assembled virus are ready. So 
these directly go and infect your macrophages. So, more and more macrophages are being infected. So, who are these macrophages? So, macrophages are also immune cells just like you have your polis who catches the thief and produce them in the coat. Your macrophages are also roaming around guard cells which catch the antigen and produce them to your T lymphocyte. Okay. So, this virus directly affects your macrophage. The macrophage directly lipo, uh, reports to the T lymphocyte, right? So, your macrophage directly, which has a lot of virus, it affects a lot of T helper cells. So, thus a person with HIV virus or AIDS has a depleted concentration of T helper cells. Thus, the immune system of the person is lost. The immune becomes very, very weak. So, this is how your HIV virus works, okay? So, what is the diagnostic method to detect your HIV? The first one is ELISA. So, how do you know a person has a HIV virus? So, what is the clinical test? The clinical test that you have is ELISA. So, ELISA is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So, I will teach you what is this assay. So, how do you treat a person with AIDS? So, you give antiretroviral drugs so that the virus does not do reverse transcriptase, right? Uh, but this is only partially effective, not completely effective. So, that is also an issue. So, how did you do, how do you detect HIV? You detect it with the help of ELISA. So, in ELISA, you have a 96 well plate. So, if you look at the figure here, so it has 96 holes. So, we don't technically call it holes, we call it as wells, right? So, you take the serum sample of a patient. So, serum is plasma without clotting factor. So, when you take the serum sample, if suppose the person has the HIV virus, he has the antigen, right? So, I take the serum sample in these wells, okay? Now, I add an antibody assuming that there is HIV virus, Okay, I add a primary antibody. So, if at all there is an antigen, my primary antibody will bind to the antigen, right? But just with my naked eye, I cannot see if the antigen has bound to the antibody. So, to find that out, I add a secondary antibody. So, secondary antibody is designed in such a way that it goes and binds to the primary antibody, okay? But this secondary antibody is conjugated with an enzyme. Why? Because let me tell you, even if the secondary antibody goes and binds, I cannot see. Can I see? I cannot see anything here, right? So, this enzyme is there, right? Suppose if the secondary antibody has bound, I will give a substrate from the top. So, I will add substrate here. So, if at all the secondary antibody with enzyme is there, right? So, what I do first, I add the serum, then I add the primary body, then I do washing. So, that anything excess will go off. This binding will be there, but other extra will be washed off. Then I will add the secondary. Then I will wash off so that the extra goes out. Right? So, now I will add a substrate. So, if the secondary antibody with the enzyme is there, this enzyme will break down the substrate into a colored product. So, can you see the color here? Yes. So, now I will measure the intensity of the color in an instrument known as spectrophotometer and I will find that the intensity is directly proportional to the concentration of the HIV virus. Okay? Yes? Yes. The serum will be placed first because a person's blood will have the HIV virus. Right? So, this is the serum which can have the antigen, primary antibody, secondary antibody. Okay? Yes? Done? Fine. So, this is how we do ELISA. The next one is cancer, the most dreaded disease of human beings. So, cancer cells do not have contact inhibition. Suppose you are um, in a normal cell. So, when your normal cell is small, it begins to grow like this. But the moment it touches the neighboring cell, it stops growing. So, when it comes in contact with the neighboring cell, the growth is inhibited, thinking this is my space. So, you build your house till the compound wall of your neighbor's house. You don't extend your house right into the neighbor's house, right? So, it is much in the same way your normal cells follow contact inhibition, whereas your uh, cancer cells do not follow contact inhibition. They keep growing one over the other. So, they do not care. They keep growing on like this. 
right so this is uncontrolled growth of cells so cancer can lead to tumors sometimes when the cancer remains in the same place where it originated so that is your benign tumor if a person has a tumor growing in the intestine and if it remains there that is a benign tumor that is a less severe case but when it starts moving to a new region and it establishes itself there so you have branches right so if you take career point we have many branches we go and establish ourselves in many places but if your cancer does uh, does it like this it is becoming more famous that is a severe condition that is your malignant tumor suppose if i have a cancer in liver a tumor originated in the liver so the tumor in the liver is benign but when this uh, tumor in the liver goes to my brain so it is metastasizing so this process of moving is known as metastasis of cancer and this is also malignant this is also severe the first tissue that reaches the brain so that is known as my neoplastic uh, tumor fine yes so your normal cells have a certain cytoplasmic to the nucleus ratio but the cancer cell it overcomes all that so this is your uncontrolled growth of your cancer cells fine so what causes cancer uh, carcinogens that is your physical chemical or biological agents which induce transformation in your base pairs in your dna so those are carcinogens so you have ionizing radiations like your x rays and gamma rays they can also cause cancer so non ionizing radiations like your uv rays can also cause dna damage so cancer causing viruses are oncogenic viruses they are viral oncogenes so there are virus so virus not only cause infection there are viruses which can cause con cancer so we call them as oncogenic virus so study of cancer is oncology so we call these as oncogenic viruses so apart from that a normal dna so our entire genome has your oncogenes so we also have cancer producing genes but these genes are in the inactivated form so they are in the proto oncogene form so one mutation will cause them to be activated and they become cancerous okay so we have cellular oncogenes and proto oncogenes Hi Jai Prakash. Yes, a very very happy good evening. So thank you so much for joining here. So it's really nice to see you here. Thank you once again. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay. So these are your cellular oncogenes. Fine. So moving forward, cancer detection and diagnosis. Yes, I had my evening tea. How about you? Did you have your evening tea? okay so how do you detect cancer we do biopsy so if if we suspect there is a cancer portion growing in the liver we take a patch of that tissue and we study right so we can call this as your histopathological study so apart from that you do x ray ct scan mri to detect your cancer but always cancer is diagnosed in the later stage so that is why our treatment is not successful okay so treatment of cancer so how do you treat cancer we do surgery we try to remove the tumor the next one is we do radiation therapy we give high ionizing radiation so that the cancer cells are dead and then we do immunotherapy we boost the immune system of the person so that it can kill the cancer cells right so radiotherapy the tumor cells are irradiated lethally so chemotherapy so you give high chemicals to kill the cancer cells but your chemotherapy can kill actively dividing cells your actively dividing cells include your hair cells and your nail cells that is why a person who who's undergoing chemotherapy has no hair because those are also actively dividing cells and they die right so that is the very same reason so sometimes individually it is not enough we have to combine two three treatments we have to combine radiotherapy and chemotherapy to kill your cancer cells right so we can also give biological response modifiers like your alpha interferon to boost your immune system so these are a type of cytokines right so you can give them to boost your immune system right so now talking about your drugs so we have four types of drugs one is your opioid okay the other one is cocaine the other one is your hallucinogens the fourth one is your depressants okay so before we go into this 
So I will explain your drugs in a simple manner, but I don't think I have a empty slide. Okay, so let me explain here. So the drugs, you remember it in four forms. I am not reading it like this. So it is waste of time because you know this. So first will be your depressant. So depressant actually slows the brain activity. So this actually slows the brain activity, okay. So thus we can have, you can cause the person to sleep. So you can solve uh, the disorders of insomnia here. So this can be solved here. Yes, I had my in evening tea. Oh, your mom is also enjoying my class. That's really nice. So very big hello and good evening to your mom as well. So thank you, ma'am, for joining my session. Yes, so you had your evening tea? Yes? Okay, so these are depressants. This is first. So the example of a depressant, can you give me one example of a depressant? Yes, so your depressant includes your barbiturates. And you can also call your amphetamines, but your amphetamines are stimulants. Your benzodiazepines are your depressants. So we have your benzodiazepines, right? So they are your depressant. The next one is hallucinogens. So hallucinogens, when you have a profound distraction of your um, images in reality. You thought this person is there. Suppose when your loved one is dead. So you have the hallucination that they are there. So you fail to come back to reality, right? So that is your hallucinogen. So example is your LSD, right? So the third one is cocaine. So cocaine is a type of addictive stimulant, okay? So cocaine is a type of addictive stimulant. So this is one and the fourth one is your opioids and your cannabinoids. So these mostly interfere with the brain function and they give a temporary relief. So these are opioids are basically analgesics because they help in relieving pain. If a person has a huge injury, so they give analgesics, so that is fine, okay? So, and then opioids, they also interfere with your brain function. So these are the things, and the last one is a stimulant. So this all of us know, so how many of you take coffee to stay awake at night and study? So this is your stimulant, right? So you have your caffeine, so you have your amphetamines, so these are your stimulants, okay? So your cocaine causes hallucinogens to some extent, but in the option if LSD is given, that is your answer. So that is a hallucinogen, okay? Is that clear? So remember it like this and then understand, so where the source is from. So if you look at the source, so we will start from opioids. So you have different types of opioids. You have natural opioids, you have synthetic opioids. So opioids include your opium. So opioid is a group of drugs. That is your psychotropic drug which is used to give you temporary relief, temporary pleasure, right? So this includes opium, morphine, heroin. So these two are natural opioids. So this is semi-synthetically prepared. So you modify morphine to have your heroin, fine? So they suppress the brain function, relieve you from intense pain. So it is used as an analgesic. Yes, it's written here. It is used as an analgesic. Fine. So the next one is your heroin. Heroin is commonly called as MAC. So it is obtained from the acetylization of your morphine. So it is obtained from the poppy plant. So you have to remember the name of the poppy plant. Fine. Yeah. The next one is cannabinoids. So they also interfere with your brain functions. So the modifications of cannabinoids. So when you only take the flower that is hashes. So the sorry, the unfertilized flower of your cannabinous sativa is produces your hashes. Then you have marijuana, charas, and ganga. Uh, sorry, ganja. So they all come from your cannabinoids, right? So the last one is your cocaine. So cocaine or alkaloid. So it also gives you temporary euphobia, but you can say that is a stimulant that gives you increased energy, right? So athletes use your cocaine so that they can have more power to run. 
So I told you amphetamines, amphetamines are stimulants, barbiturates and beside diazepines are depressants, okay. So caffeine is also a stimulant. Now talking about smoking, so tobacco is smoked, chewed or it is used as a snuff. So tobacco contains a particular drug or a material known as nicotine, that is a chemical substance that is an alkaloid. So what happens, so when you take up more of tobacco, so the nicotine present in the tobacco, it stimulates your adrenal gland. So adrenal gland is an endocrine gland, so this causes adrenaline hormones to be released. So adrenaline hormone increases your heartbeat, so thus your BP increases and also your nicotine ensures your hemo hemoglobin has more affinity to carbon monoxide. So hemoglobin generally has more affinity to carbon monoxide compared to your carbon dioxide and your oxygen. So this is also increased by your nicotine. Okay? Yes? No, generally this is a topic in class 12 where we are talking about illicit drugs. The drugs which are not... Um, legally allowed to use why and how so certain drugs they have been legally allowed to be used in the hospitals in extremely severe cases okay so it is a topic which deals about the different types of drugs so this is it so smoking increases carbon monoxide content in the blend so what is addiction or dependence so it is very something very simple so the more you start watching netflix you become addicted right so similarly when you start smoking you tend to become addicted your body depends on them so that is why whenever you fall sick you should have your grandparents at home they say don't take tablet so normally your body will heal yes your body has the beautiful healing capacity but we are in a hurry burry world in a fast driven world that we want to be fine the next moment so we start taking tablets, we start taking paracetamols, we start taking combi frame for headache. But this will make your body dependent on your drugs later. So that should not be the case. So avoid being addicted. So this is for many cases. A person who is addicted to smoking, it is tough for him to leave. So when he is trying to uh, stop smoking, when he is trying to quit smoking, he will have anxiety. He will start having illusions. So he, he will have mood swings, right? So all these are withdrawal symptoms. Right? So this is also very risky because too much of drugs causes coma and death. It can also lead to heart failure, kidney failure. It can also cause infections like AIDS and hepatitis if you use the same in, uh, needles to take up the drugs, right? So chronic use of drugs and alcohol damages the nervous system and the liver respectively. Yes? So Netflix has a lot of series, right? So if you start off one series, people don't stop with one. They continue watching the other one. So that is it, okay? It is used to leave the habit of smoking? No, it takes a lot of effort from the individual side to quit the habit of smoking. So nothing leaves, uh, so it, as such a person does not quit smoking, right? So someone has to tell him, someone has to give him a tough competition to leave him smoking. Yeah, so for chain smokers, I am saying, so a person in a day can have almost 20 to 25 cigarettes. So those people have to con uh, control, right? Yes, so with this, we are done with the chapter of human health and disease. So tomorrow, we'll be starting with respiration in plants, a part of plant physiology. So tomorrow at 5 p.m., we will meet. So if you genuinely liked my way of teaching, so please do like, share and subscribe. So thank you so much for joining my lecture today. So any doubts, get back to me in the Telegram group. So this is me wishing you more and most. So stay tuned. We will meet tomorrow. So until then, take care and bye.